we're going to talk about the infinitude of primes the idea that there are infinitely many primes and so uh, I, I had mentioned quite a few times that look there's a beautiful proof for this and i said look please go check it out on the internet um, the, and then people have said look the, the internet proofs are very mathematical i'm going to break it down a little bit so we're going to have a stab at having a go at this proof now, this is a proof given by euclid right beautiful beautiful proof excellent proof right so let's assume that there are a finite number of primes right? or let us take a set of n primes right? set of n primes p1 p2 p3 p4 till pn right? nice so it could be all the, from the smallest upwards and so just we're talking about 2 3 5 7 11 13 up to the nth prime and very nice very simple idea we're taking a set of n finite primes, the smallest n the first n finite primes then what do we do we find this number q just p1 into p2 into p3 all the way till pn and nice and then we think about q plus 1 right product of n primes the n smallest primes plus 1 and that's what that's the number we are looking at right? this number is a very interesting number we're going to drill deeper and deeper into this number product of n primes plus 1 right? so hang on to this we're going to come back to this right product of the first n primes plus 1 right nice now let's think about these primes 2 3 5 7 11 13 and this is one idea that that is that is that's got lost in, in this proof right so if you look at numbers like 2 3 5 7 11 products are multiples of 2 2 4 6 8 10 12 3 6 9 12 15 18 5 10 15 20 25 30 7 14 21 28 35 11, 22, 33, 44, 55, and so on. Okay. Any number k, 2k, 3k, 4k, 5k, 6k, and so on. Right. Nice. Now think about this. If I'm thinking about a multiple of 2, suppose I have a multiple of 2, the next multiple of 2 I get by adding 2 to it. If I have a multiple of 3, the next multiple of 3, I add 3. From 5, I add 5, I'll go to the next multiple of 5. From 7, I, any multiple of 7, I add 7, I'll go to the next multiple of 7. I add 11, I can go to the next multiple of 11. Very simple, very powerful, very taken for granted idea. We all know this, we have internalized this, we have digested it. Right? So, if you have a multiple of 23, the next multiple of 23 is this number plus 23. Or conversely, if I have a multiple of 11 and I add 3 to it, I will not reach the next multiple of 11. The next multiple of 11 is 11 away, not 3 away, too close. Okay. More relevantly, if I have a multiple of 2, if I add 1 to it, that will not be a multiple of 2. If I have a multiple of 3, I add 1 to it, it won't be a multiple of 3. If I have a multiple of 5, I add 1 to it, that won't be a multiple of 5. 7, 11, 13, etc, etc. Okay. Or, this number q plus 1, a beautiful number, I know this number is not a multiple of p1, p2, p3, till pn. q is p1 into p2 into p3 into p4 into p5 into till pn. So, q is a multiple of each of these primes q plus 1 is a multiple of p1 plus 1 multiple of p2 plus 1 multiple of p3 plus 1 multiple of pn plus 1 we just discussed if i have a multiple of a number i add 1 to it i will not get the next multiple multiple of p1 plus p1 is the next multiple of p1 25 p1 the next multiple of p1 is 26 p1 that is 25 p1 plus p1 so if i add just 1 i cannot get a multiple of so far so good that means this number q plus 1 is either a prime itself or is a multiple of some prime not included in this 1 2 p1 p2 p3 till pn 
Nice. So this gives us one beautiful idea. Again, a small step up here. This number q plus 1 is either a prime or product of two primes not in this set p1 to pn outside of that p1 to pn do not divide this number so either this q plus 1 is either a prime number itself or it's a product of some prime outside of the first n primes that we have taken any which way for any n we take or for n n prime numbers from 2, 3, 5, 7, the n smallest prime number, any n we take and we do this, we have now discovered or stumbled upon the idea that there exists at least one more prime number. Either q, it's q plus 1 itself or q plus 1 is the product of two prime numbers, neither of which is from p1 to pn, so there are at least two more prime numbers. So, whatever n prime numbers we take n could be 20 25 30 40 100 a million billion 3 trillion doesn't matter if you take the first 3 trillion prime numbers and call it a big set multiply all 3 trillion prime numbers add 1 to it that number will not be a multiple of any of these first 3 trillion prime numbers that we have taken that means that number is either itself a prime or the product of two other primes not included in this first 3 trillion, at least two other primes or in other words, if we take, if we say there are 3 trillion prime numbers and that's it, we can now say there is a 3 trillion plus 1th prime number for sure. Any number, 5 quadrillion, no, no, you give me 5 quadrillion prime numbers, I can prove that there is a 5 quadrillion plus 1th prime number that exists. We have 10 power 100 prime numbers, you collect them and put them. We can prove that there exists a 10 power 100 plus 1th prime number. It's a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant proof. This is a proof given by Euclid. Right? Apparently, this, uh, this proof has been um, kind of misconstrued slightly. Right? So, it says, let the set P1 to Pn be set of all possible primes and then product of all existing primes plus 1 should either itself be a prime or product of 2 primes not included in this. Therefore, there are infinitely many prime numbers. Very, very, very marginal difference between these two proofs. One proof states that let us assume this set to be set of all possible prime numbers under the assumption that there are finite number of prime numbers. So, we prove by contradiction. We say let there be a finite number of prime numbers. Let that be n. So, take these n prime numbers, put it into a set. Multiply all that, add 1. We know that that number is either itself a prime or product of two or more primes, not in this. We have proved the existence of one other prime beyond this set of n primes that we thought only existed. We have proved there are infinitely many primes. This, this is a proof that we generally get spoken of. Uh, turns out Euclid didn't talk like this. Euclid said, let me take n prime numbers. For any n prime numbers that we take, the first n prime number, there exists an n plus 1 prime number. So, any number of prime numbers we say we take exists. We suppose you say there are 10 prime numbers that exist. The very definition says that there is at least 11th one. Suppose you say the 35 prime numbers that exist, write the first 35 down. Using this proof, we can establish that there is at least 36th that exists. You take there are 1 million, there is 1 million plus 1th exist. So, for a finite number of prime numbers, any set of finite number of prime numbers, there exists at least one more prime number. That is Euclid's proof. Therefore, there exists an infinitely many number of primes. Right? So, it is a very marginal variance of each other, but quite a delicious proof. And beautiful, beautiful proof. It helps us drill down on, on, on this idea. Any multiple, this we take for granted, right? We have done this. You say 11 tables, you know that you have 11, next multiple of 11, that's that number plus 11. That's how we, we do tables. The idea that if you add 1, it will not be a multiple of this is something that 
we internalize but don't process very carefully. This proof is on that. So you take the product of n, n prime numbers, add one to it, that number will not be a multiple of any of these n prime numbers. So it's either itself a prime or product of at least two primes not originally included in these n prime numbers. Brilliant. So we have proved that there exists at least one more beyond the first set of n prime numbers that we took. Ergo, there exists infinitely number of, infinitely many number of primes. A beautiful, beautiful proof uh, by Euclid. Intuitive, straightforward, understandable, something that we can wrap our head around and also marvel and say, oh, nice. Sometimes maybe I'm too fascinated by numbers and ideas. Some proofs put a smile on my face. This one does. So, lovely. It is not relevant to any of these competitive exams. Right? So, not, not directly at least. I shouldn't say they're not relevant. It is super relevant, not directly relevant, but um, fascinatingly relevant.